Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. F- F- episode 1417. 1417. And today, I'm Mike Matthews here at Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont, the last place on earth. We will have Mad Rutabaga, Valentino Bison Bentley, and a segment called Live and Loco, where we'll look at some of the interesting news going on in the world today. And Mike's. Daily Podcast. Yesterday's show did not go off so well because I was having computer issues. And in order to Mike's Daily Podcast do this show, I have to do it at exactly 6 or before 6 o'clock. And otherwise, I will get docked and I won't get to do this show and you will be so sad. And then I watched Rogue One yesterday and it made me mad. I, I don't get why I even wa- I don't I'm not gonna watch Star Wars movies. Mike's Daily Podcast. They just upset me so much. It was such a big part of my childhood, the very first Star Wars movie, and to see all the Mike's ones they did later. Daily. I just get so mad. Podcast. I'm just not a fan of George. Yeah. George Lucas just does not make me happy anymore. I'm not gonna talk anymore about it, so don't worry. I'm not gonna go into a Rogue One rant. For a movie that came out eons ago Interestingly enough I have a friend named Ryan And Ryan said Hey, I'm going to bring a movie Over to my dad's And the dad invited A bunch of people and they came and they walked in Just like that, like this person Hello my commercial to my dad This sounds like a very interesting Story I walked in on Ooh. Anyway 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 Cafe anyway Anyway I'm going to make a spell on you Michael Masu What's the spell for? To make you tell the story now <laughs> Thank you for that as someone else walked in Hello dear Mike This is Valentino the banking attendant And this is Bison Bentley Do you know that? Mike tell us this great story that you are about to tell us day. Yeah <laughs> You're darn tootin'. All right. So Ryan brings this movie over, and it's funny. So there's me, Ryan's dad, my friend Robert's dad, Robert, and there's so there's the five of us guys. We're eating uh, Ryan's mom's lasagna. It was so delicious, and the movie was not good. And here's today's podcast picture. I mentioned it was a Paul Dano movie, but you know I just. Ah, I'm just done with movies, I guess. Because nothing makes me happy anymore when I watch a movie. I'm never like, oh, this was a wonderful... The Academy Awards upset me. Anything about... And my dad was in the movie business. My mom's second husband was in the movie business. I've been surrounded by it, and I just don't like it anymore. I'm mad. I'm mad about... The way showbiz has gone But I love podcasts And I think you should listen to as many podcasts as you can Good ones anyway Like to the point where they discussed And I'll get to the podcast picture in a moment About the horrible happenings in Charlottesville Charlottesville? Not Charlotte, it's Charlottesville Hi, I'm on the west coast And I never go past Mississippi Uh, The Mississippi River No Yeah Charlottesville and the horrible things That happened this past weekend And there was a fascinating They were talking all about The uh, uh, You know the, the, The white supremacists There's just so Many groups now And this vanguard for America Thing is really scary They're really mobilized Young Racist idiots And they go online And they're total trollers And in fact they go after Conservatives You would think you're, they're, they're eating their own tail They're Well this could be very delicious With a little salt But no they were, They're going after their own Parts of the people Of their own party People that are in their What would be considered Their own party They're going after them online And it was 
fascinating to hear the the amount of weaponry that was at Charlottesville over the weekend. So many guns and just weapons. People were were ready for a fight, and the police did really very little. So it's a fascinating to the point podcast I was listening to, and it was on my drive to work today, and it's fresh in my mind. So. Spread love, not hate. And, you know, Berkeley has been definitely ground zero for a lot of craziness that's happened in the war against hate. And, well, Basil and I went to Berkeley a couple weeks ago. And there's a picture of him at Berkeley. You can see that at mikesdailypodcast.com, where you can also help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that Amazon icon and buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out, makes us happy, and the world goes round and round, and that's a good thing because of gravity, and it keeps us on the planet. Ooh, I also met someone yesterday named Anna. As I'm walking Basil the Boxer, there's a lady named Anna, and she goes, hey, would you like some grapes? Uh, She was talking to another friend of mine, and hey, did I get, I got a bunch of Castro Valley grown grapes. Green grapes, and they are so delicious and and sweet. One of the positive things of living in the Bay Area. The negatives, of course, would be the crazy traffic and the fact that everything costs way too freaking much money. But this was fun, and I met. It costs a lot of money, and and I met Anna and Basil the boxer. So wanted to chase after her cats, but luckily we were able to avert that. Uh, uh, avoid that But Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Is where you can go To help us out Through the PayPal If you want to help us out That way You'll get a special greeting From all the Cafe Anyway characters And you'll become An inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster And life will be wonderful There's all the past shows Links to the past shows Past the interviews That I've done And the past podcast pictures As well All there at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com And now the segment called Live and Loco So first off, this just grabbed my attention. North Korea backs off their threat to hit Guam. They've pulled back their threat to attack the U.S. territory after days of trading increasingly bellicose rhetoric with Donald Trump and hours after China took its toughest steps against Pyongyang to support U.N. sanctions. So we all knew China would have a big influence on them. And here it goes. So North Korea state media said today that Kim Jong-un had made his decision not to fire on Guam after visiting a military command post and examining a military plan presented to him by senior officers. But it warned that he could change his mind, quote, if the Yankees persist in their extremely dangerous, reckless actions. The turnabout came as the U.S. and China were engaged in a delicate contest on two fronts, with each trying to push the other to handle the North Korea situation the way it preferred, even while both spired over trade issues. That they insisted were unrelated. Beijing said it would ban imports of North Korean coal, iron, and seafood starting today. Measures that come from sanctions passed by the UN Security Council this month targeting Pyongyang's nuclear arms program. The timing of the announcement was a response to Trump's plan to kick off a probe into China's alleged theft of U.S. intellectual property. That probe was officially announced later yesterday. Hmm, see how it's all interwoven. What a strange world we live in, where things are woven together. And global leaders from Canada to Germany strongly denounced the Charlottesville clashes and decried the role of white supremacists. Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, said the scenes at the right wing extremist march were absolutely repulsive, naked racism, anti-Semitism and hate in their most evil form were on display. The other thing that this podcast was talking about that I was listening to talk about Charlottesville was that that the sense of police weren't really prepared. What does this say to future rallies and will they be prepared And hopefully Charlottesville is an example of what you shouldn't do. And we have to be way more prepared for rallies in the future. President Trump was criticized early on for not directly denouncing the white nationalists, white supremacists, neo 
Nazis and Ku Klux Klan members that marched. And actually, this podcast I listened to also mentioned that Ku Klux Klux Klan, though they were there, were actually more outnumbered by the people like from this strange new anti-supremacist group called the Vanguard for America. Now, on to uh, an anti-Trump rally going on today in Manhattan. Actually, this happened yesterday when Trump made his first visit home, taking off seven uh, taking office seven months ago, thousands of protesters rallied outside the iconic Trump Tower skyscraper where the president is staying, while another group staged a mock die-in and funeral for American values nearby before marching to the event. Trump touched down at JFK at 8.30 yesterday evening, then boarded a helicopter to Manhattan, where a car took him to his Fifth Avenue home. A deafening chorus of shame, shame, shame rang out at the president motorcade and it entered a white tent covering the 56th street underground entrance into trump's building and chants of lock him up and new york hates you were quickly followed three days after trump named his campaign foreign policy in march of 2016 the youngest of the new advisors sent an email to seven campaign officials with the subject line meeting with russian leadership including putin george papadopoulos not to be confused with George Stepanopoulos, there's a lot of Georges with interesting last names, offered to set up a meeting between us and the Russian leadership to discuss U.S.-Russian ties under President Trump, telling them his Russian contacts welcome the opportunity. This, according to internal campaign emails read to the Washington Post, the proposal set a ripple of concern through a campaign headquarters in Trump Tower. Sam Clovis, the campaign Cho chairman, wrote that he thought NATO allies should be consulted before any plans were made. Another Trump advisor, retired Rear Admiral Charles Kubik, cited legal concerns, including a possible violation of U.S. sanctions against Russia and of the Logan Act, which prohibits U.S. citizens from author- unauthorized negotiation with foreign governments. But Papadopoulos, a campaign volunteer with scant foreign policy experience, persisted. Between March and September, they sent at least half a dozen requests for Trump as he returned from the primary candidate to party nominee. That Well, something's going on there. I don't have time to go into it because I'm almost done with my amount of time I can talk to you on this podcast. But there... That whole story is in the Washington Post if you care to see it. The teaser video for the new Galaxy Note 8 has uh, this S Pen stylus. A blue animation of the S Pen in this video. It flies in from the left to cross out concepts like big and point to a more ambitious concept like bigger. So it's got this stylus. Okay, for the Note 8. And uh, it's going to have this dual rear camera. Okay, that's going on with the tech news. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I'm not big on styluses. Didn't we use that with the, what, what was that, the Palm Pilot? And, you know, you'd lose the dang stylus. Oh, but not if you've got a place that for the phone to hold it. Then you won't lose it. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm all about the touching the screen and doing stuff with my finger type thing. Doing stuff with my finger. Hey, that's what we'll call the show today is Finger. Next show, we'll have the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. It was a quick show. Another quick one. But hopefully we covered some topics. And some topics that may bloom into other topics. We'll see. But definitely we hit some of the big stuff today. Now I must leave you. But I'll leave you with this one thought. Delicious baklava. Uh Uh-huh. That's a good thought. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.